This example talks about how the platformer example works. And if you haven't yet, I suggest you take a look at the examples for Move With Walls and the Maze Runner before taking a look at this as they explain some of the concepts that I really won't cover in much detail here. But in this platformer case, we've got a red dot here, which represents a player. And in later examples, we'll show you how to make that into graphics. And by hitting the left, right, and up arrow key, the user can basically go and jump on the platforms. And that's about all there is to it. With this example, we'll add the graphics, we'll add side scrolling and levels and that type of thing in later examples. So let's take a look at how this works. Start off with, I've got my global constants with colors and the screen width. And then the player class that I've got down here is really similar to the player class that we had in the Maze Runner example, but with one notable difference here. And that is, rather than having a move, I've gone back to using an update. If you remember from the move with walls or the Maze Runner, that I had to move and I passed in a parameter that showed the walls. In this case, I've actually got an attribute called level that I need to change every time I switch levels. In this example, I only have one level, so it's not really a big deal, but I will go back and change this level, and that will be how the player can get a hold of the walls. This init creates the, the main sprite itself, just fills it with red, width of 40, height of 60, nothing really too big there. The update is somewhat more complex. I've got a calc grav function here. And the calc grav function, if you go down here, simply takes a look at y. If y is equal to 0, I set it to 1. I do this because if I've got a player on top of a platform, like say I've got my little player drawn by my terrible stick figure here. If the player is on top of a platform and I'm on a moving platform like I'll have later, if the platform moves down and the player's change Y is zero, then the player just kind of floats up above the platform and doesn't really come in great contact with the platform and just sort of bounces along. I don't really want that. So this is sort of a fix that gets around it when we get to moving platforms. This controls the amount of gravity. If you want heavier gravity, do bigger than 0.35. If you want lighter gravity, make it smaller. This is just the rate of acceleration. Note, I don't set the change equal to 0.35. I keep adding it. So each frame, the acceleration keeps getting faster and faster. This is the check to see if we're on the ground. If we're on the ground, then basically I take a look and I set change Y back to zero because there's no need to fall off the screen. I just assume that the screen actually is a floor. If you don't have a floor for your screen and the user dies when they fall off the screen, then you might want to change that. Going back up here, that's the calc grab. Then I just got my move left and right. This is a whole lot like the move walls. And in fact, it is the exact same as the move walls and the maze runner examples. Same with move up and down. Really nothing new there. It's mainly this calc grab that we end up doing. Here are the movements. Uh, this controls jump, so if the user hits the up arrow, this is called. We can't always jump. If you're in the middle of the air, you can't jump to go higher because that, that would basically allow the person to fly. What we do is we move the player. So if the player's right here, we move the player down two pixels temporarily. If the player, when moved down two pixels, encounters a platform, then we know the player is resting on a platform and we allow the user to jump up. And I do it by two pixels instead of one, just again for moving platforms. But if the player, we move them down two pixels and they're not hitting a platform, then we do not allow the player to jump. And if the player basically has hit a platform, 
or if the player's at the bottom of the screen, then we set the jump velocity. If you want stronger jumps, make that a essentially a larger negative number, so like negative 15. I know that's smaller, but at any rate, make it like negative 15 for stronger, negative 5 for lighter jumps, whatever your particular game needs. Here I do a little bit different. Instead of doing the change speed, I'm doing a go left, go right, and stop when the user is hitting the left or right arrow buttons. Kind of changed my mind on how I wanted to manage that, but you can manage it with some of the other techniques that we used before if you want. Works fairly well. This is the Classical platform. Basically, it's the same thing as like what we had for the wall. Really, nothing terribly new here. This is my level class. And this example only has one level, but later on we'll add more levels. And this will make things a lot easier. All my platforms are contained here in a list. That's the variable for it, and I actually create it here. It's really like the room class that we had with the Maze Runner example. I've got a list of enemies if I ever decide to add them. I also have a background image. I add that in a later example that we've got. This is the init. Creates a list that I actually care about. And here I do an update. I'll update all the enemy plat enemies and the platforms. This will allow the entire level to update with one call to here. This draws everything on the level. So it'll draw all the platforms and all the enemies. This is a super class. You don't actually create an instance of this. What you actually create an instance of is right here, level one. This calls the init from up above. Here's where I create my platforms. X, Y, width and height. Although now that I take a look at that, it is not X, Y, because that would give all the platforms in the same location. This particular case, I've got this is the width and height, and this is the X, Y. Just notice that as I put this together. That's reversed from the Maze, run maze Runner example. Anyway, yep width and height and X and Y and here I go through a loop and go ahead and create the blocks and add them to the list. Note here this is interesting I'll use this when I use moving platforms later on but each block itself has a reference to the player and that's because when the block moves it needs to know if it runs into the player so it needs to know where the player was. So before, the player needed to know where the walls were, and if we end up with platforms that move, then the platforms need to know where the player is. If you don't have moving platforms, you don't actually need that. All right, that's the main part of it. Basically, here I've got my main program. I init, I create stuff, and I create the levels. If I had multiple levels, I would just go ahead and add them right here. You can add them in two lines like I did in the Maze Runner example, or I can actually call a constructor directly in the append and create it right here. And this activates the keys and calls player stop or player go left, right, and jump. I draw the level, I draw the active sprites, which is the player. Wait, flip, and do it again. So that's about all there is to it. It's a fairly simple example, a little bit longer perhaps than some of the other ones, but we can expand on this to add levels, add scrolling, and eventually add in graphics.